Get ready for Serena, Teresa, Vanessa, Bettina. Come on, say what? Come on, say what? We got Pam, hot topics. We got what the fudge. So bring it home. Say what? Bring it home. Say what? We got questions. We got the answers. You wanna cheat? You wanna chat? You wanna talk about this and talk about that? You're in the right place to hear the facts. Bring it home. Say what? Say what? The ladies are bringing the conversation. So join us or say what across the nation. Bring it on, y'all. Say what? Come on. Say what? Bring it on. Say what? Come on. Say what? Bring it on. Say what? Come on. Say what? Bring it on, y'all. Say what? Come on. Say what? Bring it on. Say what? I done got a little carried away. Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Say What podcast. That's right. I had some lemon juice this morning. Say What. It is so great to have y'all with us today. And we got all four ladies. And we are so happy you guys look amazing. Say hi to our listeners. Hi to our listeners. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Happy Saturday. Thank yes. you. I need y'all to come with some juice, Miss Bettina. Miss Bettina gonna bring it. She gonna bring it. Slash, slash, slash. <laughs> junior Bishop, veteran, single mom. Slash. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Hey, hey, <laughs> prep it up. Prep it up. <laughs> welcome, welcome, ladies. Welcome everybody who is tuned into the Say What podcast. We are amazing, amazing women. So happy to have you with us today. And you are amazing to us. So we are having a conversation today. And I'm glad you have chimed in to be part of it. And y'all know how we do. We cannot go another further without some word, some word of God. And the bishop is present. What is it that thus saith the Lord? I tell you, he's really speaking today. He's talking about faith. I'm coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and I will be reading verses 13 and 14, and this is the Passion Translation. Remember to stay alert and hold firmly to all that you believe. Be mighty and full of courage. Let love and kindness be the motivation behind all that you do. And so basically, this week, God dropped in my heart that we must focus on our faith. It is our faith that will get us through difficult times. In this verse, it, it, there are several key points in this verse. He says, first, to stay alert. That means to be watchful. As the um, uh, young people say, that means to stay woke. Mm -hmm. Be aware of what's going on around you. Stay connected to the vine. And the second point was to hold to what we believe. Stand firm in faith in what you believe in. I believe in God. I believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe in his promises. And so this word is telling me to stand firm in what I believe in, knowing that he will. He's told me that he, one of his promises is that he would never leave us or forsake us. Amen. He tells us that he's our protector. He will provide for us. So again, when I'm going through certain things, I must stand firm in what I believe. The third point is uh, tap into your strength, your inner man. Draw from that strength. The strength comes from the time that you spend with the word of God, that you, the time that you spend with him. So when you draw from that, it, it dispels, it takes the focus off of the things going on around you. He says to have confidence. So I must have confidence in what I believe. I must not waver in my belief. I must stand firm on it. I must have confidence that no matter what's coming up against me, whether it's something at work, dealing with a coworker, with my supervisor, I need not fear what's going on over in the Ukraine. Whatever is going on, I have confidence in what I believe in the word of God and the truth the Bible tells me the truth shall make me free. I believe that the truth Amen. shall make me free. Amen. And then lastly, in verse 14, love must be, uh, we must, um, everything we do must be motivated by love. So as we are faced with adversity, no matter what's going on, let's remember who we are in Christ. And if you don't know him, come to know him so that you will know who you are in Christ, because that could be the reason why you're having an identity crisis. And mm -hmm. so this will allow you to respond to negativity. It will cause you to re respond to um, 
uh, adversity, anything, you can do it in love because you're not doing it within your own power and strength. We just identified that at the beginning. You're doing it through the power and the strength of God. So that is the word to the day. Keep the faith and know that he has you and you need not fear no man or nothing. Amen. That is amazing word. I, oh, what I love about God and the word, and a lot of times when we were kids, you know, you read thee, thou, this, so you didn't kind of get what was going on. But he's very instructional. Be firm, yes, be vigil, be sober in mind, pay attention to stuff going on around you. You know, Absolutely. very practical. Nothing, you know, in some hypothetical where you couldn't understand. It's very practical. So keep the faith, do everything in love. What were the other two, Sonia? Uh, stay strong. Uh huh. Hold on to what you believe. Amen. And, Amen. And you covered the focus. Stay in focus. Stay in woke. <laughs> Stay and stay and woke. Mm -hmm. stay, can you imagine Jesus walking around talking about y'all need to be woke? Stay woke. Well, I can hear power to the people. Him <laughs> and his disciples. Him and his, his disciples. disciples. Right, right, right. Yeah, I can see it. Mm -hmm. They over there Absolutely. singing childish Gambino. <laughs> you reaching out, ain't you? But that's all right. You know, seriously, that's how he, he was cool. Yes. He hung with people because you ever noticed and you watching Jesus move throughout communities, he couldn't be somebody that was not approachable. Right. Because right. everybody was approaching him and he was cool with everybody. People were inviting him over for dinner, this, that, and the third. So he was cool. Yes. Not walking around be thou and this. So right. yeah, I can I can definitely see him saying be woke. Absolutely. Any any final words, uh, uh, Bettina? What do you think about this word today? Well, I'm just gonna say when the bishops say stay woke, then there's nothing else to say. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm done. Sometimes you don't need to stretch this thing out. That was enough. <laughs> That's enough. I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. But Miss Sonia, thank you so much for the word. Miss Vanessa, tell us what's going on in our world. Well. Sonia touched on it uh, pretty much. Um, it's been all over the news, so I'm quite sure you all have seen something or heard something about Russia invading uh, Ukraine this past Thursday. Um, they, Russia sent uh, troops and they launched an attack on Ukraine. Um, Ukraine's health minister said Russia's intent was to destroy the state of Ukraine, uh, which is a westward looking democracy and the intent on moving out of Moscow's orbit. So Ukraine's uh, president Zelensky announced that 137 Ukrainian soldiers and civilians had been killed in the attack. I'm not sure what the count is this morning. I haven't seen the news per on purpose um, and hundreds more are wounded. Um, he said in a televised address as the attack began that um, Vladimir Putin warned other countries that any attempt to interfere would lead to consequences you have never seen in history. So President Biden on Thursday also announced a new round of severe sanctions. And as of yesterday, they also had sanctioned Putin himself and a lot of his uh, elite um, financiers. So they've got some sanctions that have never been um, imposed on them before, imposed on them as of yesterday. Um, and, and Putin said that every, anyone who's all the countries who've helped Ukraine um, would there would there would be retaliation and now they are asking companies the US is asking all their companies to make sure that their computers and everything are secure because they they feel that cyber attacks Russia is go going to attack us and other countries you know via cyber um, so you know if you all don't have your computers updated I suggest you get that 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 spyware and everything updated but I think it's just sad what's going on um, in our world today um, with this attack on Ukraine still not exactly sure as to why I know Putin always felt that once they lost Ukraine in the past that he always wanted it back and I guess he sees this opportunity you know to to to, to do so not sure why um, but I just I just think it's really sad watching all the refugees leaving their homes and then there are several you know a lot of the Ukrainians have decided to stay there and fight um, 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 last I checked they were at the the capital uh, in 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 Kiev they were at the capital in Kiev and on the verge of possibly um, overtaking the capital um, but I just you know just ask you all to stay in prayer and you know what are your thoughts on it Miss Patina, what do you think? Well, anytime there's a war, first of all, you know, there's sadness. And when somebody's trying to basically take something that really doesn't belong to you, right? 
So it, you know, it's more serious than being in the schoolyard and a child bringing a basketball and somebody bigger trying to come and take the basketball from them. You're trying to take something that's not yours and you're trying to take over something. And all of this boils down to me about control, um, and which is, you know, generally why we end up in cl- conflict. It's about control. And it's just unfortunate to me um, that we have. I know one of the, the dancers from Dancing with the Stars, who's from the Ukraine, he was over there, Max, Max. Um, Shmierskovsky. Shikovsky, uh-huh. Yeah, all of that right there with the, all of them concerts blended together. <laughs> Shmi- I'm going to go with that. We're going to go with Kofsky at the end. Yeah, so, go with so, that. Right. So, you know, he's there and. You know, I know the reality for his family, who's here in the United States, his right. child, right. is that he may not make it back. Right. And so I, I, it's just sad. It's heartbreaking for me. It's heartbreaking. It is. Me. It's hard to watch. It's really hard for, to watch. For sure. because, you know, it's for the grace of God. We're not in a war on our own turf. Right. Um, from another country. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and as some of the talking heads with some sense have stated, you know, it's it's Ukraine today. Who's next? Right. It could be any of us if they can do that and get away with it. You know, what other steps are they planning on taking? And China um, has yet to really come out against it. They they really are, are kind of turning their heads to what's going on. And it's just I, I think I think it's just really sad. You know, I think it's just sad. I just think it's just a, we're in a sad state right now. In the world. Right. Yes, but I, I know, just it I, was. Go ahead, Sonia. Go ahead. No, I, I can wait. I was just saying to watch how Putin was strategically putting his stuff in different places. How they came in the sea, in the Baltic Sea. How they came over here and went around and kind of did whatever. But what this points out to me um, is the previous twice impeached, disgraced president oh, that we got out of sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue. One of the conversations that was going on during his presidency was the fact that he was a weakness and that Putin could work through him to get what he wanted. Mm-hmm. So what they wanted, they fought so hard to keep him in office. Absolutely. And at the same time, um, he was like, as you said, Vanessa, earlier, a talking head. Remember when he was in Geneva and mm-hmm. just talking like, OK, he really didn't do anything. No, this is just not what it was. And now his response has been, you know, he's very he's a genius. He knows what he's he's like a talking head. He, so, he's again, you have he's to get rid puppet. of him. Yes. He's his puppet. It's like he, he's praising the excuse Putin used to invade Ukraine. He said the excuse he used was genius. And Pompeo is also praising him. And I'm just dumbfounded sitting there listening to this. It just it just amazes me to to just I I I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I, I am. I am. It's this just, is why he should not be reelected. At period. All, at all. At all. Uh, but unfortunately, um, some of us will still vote him back of in. Of course, of course. And Matthew 24, I just want to say this. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I had the scripture because we we can say a lot of things and quote things, but I just wanted to give the verse Matthew 24 and 6, and then I'm going to read verse 13 as well. You were here of wars and rumor of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against uh, kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn, turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear, deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness Amen. The love of most will grow cold, but the one, hallelujah, who stands firm to the end will be saved. I wanted to read the whole passage 
because we must stand firm, just as I said in our scripture earlier, we must stand firm in faith, not by move, not be moved by what we see or what we hear that's going on all around us, but keep our eyes on the prize because he's telling us if we do that and not waver, we will be saved. But we must believe that. That means going back to stand firm on what we believe. What really do you believe? Do you choose to believe the truth of God? Are the lies of Satan. And there today I stand firm saying I choose to believe the truth of God. And we have to make that decision. So as you see these things go, coming forth, just go in prayer. That's what we can do. Put the word on it. Put your armor on every day and go into battle. Because guess what? While they are fighting, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. While they are fighting physically, we should be fighting spiritually. You're right in the spirit realm and remember that this is a spiritual battle you're right you are so Absolutely. right we can end show off that but it's true I mean, it's true. It, it is. You're right. You are absolutely right. And I have to remind myself because it just absolutely. I can't consume too much of of it, because if you consume it, then it starts to get in your spirit and then it can start. You, you really have to watch you. You really. So so I purposely have not watched this morning. Um, I'm sure I'll see, you know, touch base with it later today. But it, it, you're right. You, we have to stay on our knees in prayer because we can't fight this in the physical. No, you know, I saw um, someone on Facebook had posted, uh, made a comment that said, um, if you if you want to know why we need AK uh, 47s and AR uh, 15s, um, it's the, the answer is all over the news. Yes. Meaning this war. And, 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 you know, that's their way of, of fighting. And I'm thinking, no, when I saw that, it's like, mm -mm. It's, it's just, it's not right. It still isn't right. It's still not a reason. You know, what was the reason before Thursday? What was the reason before this happened? Mm -hmm. You are so right. This is a spiritual battle that's not going to be won in the physical. It's just not, it's just not. And, and we do have to stay in prayer, not just for other people, but for ourselves, mm -hmm. for our own, you know, personal state, mind and well-being to keep us on track. I'm sorry, Bettina, you had something. No. But, you know, it's, it's, it's we do have to stay in prayer. Amen. We do have to stay in prayer and uh, ask all our listeners, you know, to do so, you know, just pray for our brothers and sisters right now that are under attack in, in Ukraine and, and pray for those who are even in support. Pray for the soldiers on both sides, that God will touch the heart of both sides. Even Putin himself, God can touch him and change his he mind. Can. He can touch him also. He can turn this thing around and we <laughs> need to just pray and pray and continue to pray. The effectual and fervent prayers availeth much Amen. and 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 prayer still works yes i'm does. sorry sonia you done preached i'm not trying to come behind you i'm gonna move on we <laughs> just gonna offer the offering plate and you know open the door to the church that's what we're gonna do <laughs> anyway but no i like what you said vanessa also remember mm -hmm. like you said earlier don't focus on this on a regular because it affects whom you are you got to be able to have a filter with all of that and you know because it'll be on day in day out you know, be everywhere. And it's just, it's all consuming and you can't, you can't be like that. So, um, you know, take it to God in prayer. You be able to, and, and mine has been praying for leaders, even praying for our current president to make the right decisions, you know, and, so we, we've got to keep that in mind. And, and before I move on, Sonia said something to me yesterday, God is going to really test our faith. I mean, we are we're going to really have to put our faith to work, put it in action. It's enough lip service, but we're going to really have to. He's going to really test our faith. As my parents used to say, keep living. He's going to test. He's going to really test our faith. And it's times like these when we can grow stronger in it by Amen. staying on our knees and our face in prayer. I'm going to move on now. Um, 
to a, a lighter, more happier, more uh, joyous topic. Miss Kintaji Brown Jackson, President Joe Biden nominated, let me say it again, Miss, Mrs. Kintaji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court on Friday, setting in motion a historic confirmation process yes. for the first black woman to sit on the highest court in the nation. I think that deserves a round of applause. Too bad we don't have an applause button. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, she is we gonna get one. <laughs> yes, we do need to get one. But she's actually, to me, the most qualified out of anybody sitting on the bench. Because you know, she 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 clerked for um the 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 uh, what do you the justice? She clerked mm -hmm. clerked for the justice that's leaving. And you know she's got she's got experience under her belt, and she's already been vetted three times by both parties. But um, as of yesterday, I did hear where um, some of the Republicans they said yes, we vetted her three times, and you know she was good. They passed her, but they said this was a different beast. So they're going to make sure they get more detail. I don't know. I, yes, ma'am. Yeah. I have to say, I was I was ecstatic. Okay, I was. We were laughing before we came on air. Everybody, we were talking about you know, this happening and the fact that BET preempted, BET yeah. does not preempt, okay? You're going to watch Martin for 24 hours a day and they <laughs> preempted and said, no, no, we need to see this. But you know, now I'm going to play the, the weird person right now. I wonder how Merrick Garland is feeling. What Remember he was the poet, he didn't get the, the, the Senate would not sit when Obama's last, last term he had recommended him for the Supreme Court and the Senate controlled by Mr. McConnell said, we're not even going to entertain it. So I'm curious, just throwing that question out there. What do you think Mayor Garland is feeling? He shouldn't feel anything because it, it's a total, that was a totally different beast. That was a different time. It was, it was under a different rule. It was under a uh, communist rule at that time. I'm calling it communist. I sure am. Communist. You communist. communist. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> and you know, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, a, that was a totally different time. And he should not feel hurt because he should understand if he were to me, if he were being, if it were today, if, if President Obama had nominated him today, I think it would be it would have been a totally different situation. Mm. Go ahead, Sonia Bettina. Yeah, I don't I don't understand. Well, I mean, if he if he has an issue, he has an issue. He's entitled to his issue. Right. However, he may not even have one because President Biden is basically making good on a campaign promise, promise mm -hmm. and he's not a black female. So right. what he. I mean, like, you shouldn't be upset that you're not thrown in the hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just a thought. Just a thought. I was wondering, you know, with them, with all of them now being, you know, in the same era, so I wonder how he's feeling. You but you're right. Add, he's not, you he's not a black add, female. You just wanted to add too much hot sauce in the gumbo. <laughs> yeah, I, I had too much hot sauce. Her stomach hurt, but go ahead. But I just want to go back to what Vanessa said about her being the most qualified. And, you know, it just spoke to me of something that I, I've been telling my children uh, since they were little, and I'm sure you guys have done the same thing and your parents probably said it to you, is that we have to be better than good. Always. Extra. Extra. And when you said that, all I could think is that she she would be the most qualified because one, she's a female and two, she's black. And we yep. have to, it's always been said, we have to be above and beyond and beyond and mm -hmm. beyond to yeah. even be considered. So that right there just told me that she really laid the foundation and she's very deserving of this opportunity. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I was happy to see her and she had her whole family there. So yes. it was, it was yes. amazing. And Absolutely. She told, amazing. she told her kids, she said, I just wanted to let you all know that no matter what position I have, I am still and always going to be your mother. <laughs> you better know that's right. In other words, you can get a knot snatched up in exactly. you. I just need exactly. you to be clear. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. So congratulations and kudos to her. And uh, lastly, this last uh, topic I just wanted to hit on quickly. Wendy Williams' uh, talk show has been canceled. And Ms. Sherry Shepard will now, uh, she says she's not taking over Wendy's show, but she has her time slot and um, a lot of her people. <laughs> but she's going to have a new show called Sherry. 
Um, but it's but she's she wanted people to know that she was not taking over with Wendy's show, although she's got her time slot and her people. But it's not taking over. No one can ever uh, replace Wendy, and um, she's happy and she's the new uh, talk show in Wendy Williams's old time slot, along with her people. Did nor I say should anybody try to? Her? Nor should anybody try to take over that slot. I mean, try Wendy. to be Wendy. Okay, Wendy, Wendy yes, is enough all by herself. She <laughs> all by herself. Does not need backup or cosigners. Okay, <laughs> so I say congratulations to Sherry. Mm -hmm. um, blaze your own trail mm -hmm. and do the best that you can do. Uh, good, good luck. You know, good best wishes to Sherry. That's Kudos all I can to say. Her. Kudos, exactly. most definitely. Kudos Absolutely. to her. Thank you, thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, Miss Vanessa. I was really happy for Sherry. She cried when she made the announcement. Yes. Um, she said she had always wanted to do that since she was a little girl. Oh. And would would talk to her baby dolls and having a talk show. She's always wanted one, so she <laughs> cried and said that she was so happy. Um, and she said, and she gave God credit. She said, "Don't think just because you don't have it that you won't get it." So <laughs> you know, I was ecstatic for her and the ladies of the View who used to um, be on the show with Wendy all congratulated her and kind of went from there. And I think she has a good relationship with Wendy. Right. So right. that's why she wanted to make sure it's not looking like, you know, she's trying to throw Wendy out or whatever, but <clears throat> things happen and, you know, she was able to get the show. So I was really, really wait, happy. For wait, her. Lisa, wait a minute. You got to read Dion's, Dion's quote. <laughs> Wendy Williams oh, has Lord. been canceled. What in the world am I going to do now? Life is over <laughs> as I know it. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> we don't have nobody saying how you doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Sherry is it, it, immensely funny. So I think the show is going to be she great and she did really well as as the host on the show. So Miss Bettina, what the fudge? <laughs> Let me say this what the fudge happens to be quite appropriate uh for the announcement that you just made with Sherry Shepard having a show because Sherry also has, well, never mind. Let me just let you see and you will, you will understand exactly what I'm saying. And I will explain what else Sherry has. And I admire Sherry. So I just need you all as I, as I always do, I need to take a moment to breathe <clears throat> into it. Uh, go ahead, uh, Talisa, if you could just present, if you will. So oh, yes, yes, that he is a dog with a lace get out front. Of here. <laughs> <laughs> the Sherry Shepard has a line of wigs. I'm not sure if this is one of them. I don't know. Oh my! Um, I, I just want to say that um, this right here, this needs to. We need to take this to Dog Protective Services. <laughs> if by chance you are putting a lace front on your pooch, big or small, if you will. Um, I don't get me wrong. They got it on there real nice. You can't see the line. You can't see the little uh, net from the lace front or anything. However, I'm sure, and, and the pacifier, and the pacifier, I'm sure there is somebody at Dog Protective Services that, that can probably do something with this. So when I saw it, the only thing that I could say <laughs> is, what yeah, the fudge? <laughs> all, all I could say to this is, I have to hurry up and get my businesses off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> because if because if wigs, if lace fronts for dogs, dogs. can take <laughs> off, <laughs> Vanessa, you're a shoe in. Okay? <laughs> People oh need goodness. something to do. And, oh, and thank real, you, thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Wig. Like you can go on Amazon and get this. So this is not Are for you serious. Wow. I want to, I'm curious just how many have been sold. <laughs> I just want to know how much dog fur the dog lost because the glue that they put on to keep the lace on. <laughs> I want to know when they went to remove that, how much fur was lost on the top of this dog's head. That's that's what I want to know. That's why I said dog protective services must get involved. Is the hairline mm -hmm. gone, Batita? <laughs> And when you said dog can't protective even, service, can't even pull no baby hair together. Wait, wait, wait. And you know the commercials that come on TV between oh 2 and 4 a.m. Oh with the dog that have been abused, and you see this pop up. Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody needs to call them. 
it's over between two and four a.m. Listen, oh, as goodness. much as I love this person, this dog's uh uh this dog and Stevie Wonder gonna have something in common because that that <laughs> hairline gonna be way back here for us all over with. Okay, <laughs> just way back here. That's all I'm saying. Oh, wow, wow, wow! I don't make up this stuff, people. I just record it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. Well, thank you, Miss Bettina. Um, I'm I'm gonna be watching people and their dogs now because you know they're gonna be doing crazy stuff. And I wasn't paying attention before, but I'm be paying attention now because it makes me nervous. Yes. Yes. Makes me nervous about what they're doing with these with these animals, and it should not happen. So absolutely. Yes. So we're we're having a conversation today about a very hot topic in our communities. Um, and um, it has caused quite an upstir, uproar, however you want to put it. Um, and that is the subject of CRT. Um, so before we get started in the conversation, I feel what's important is to be able to at least define it. Because a lot of people are hearing about it. They think race is involved with it, which it is. But again, not knowing the definition is really, really um important so that we understand what we're talking about it's basically a framework meaning it's not actual it's a theory crt critical race theory okay um theories are things that people think about say theorize this is what this is blah 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 but it is not something that is locked in um and it's a framework so it's been discussed by legal scholars usually in graduate school okay um, and it is not something that has been going on all this time. It was actually created in the 1980s. Um, and they basically explore how racism is built into our systemic structure. Okay. So if it's a theory, just like we have different theories. Um, I can't think of the, the gentleman's name. Um, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, his theory that gravity, you know, you, this, this is going to fall. Okay. So it's the theory, but it had been accepted. Okay. So this is just a framework and it examined how our laws have been created with um, possibly racism going all through it. Okay. So when we think about that, ladies, what, what are your thoughts about the conversation about CRT in our community? Well, I, to be honest with you, until I started hearing, um, actually until a few months ago, I guess I don't know where I've been. My son brought it to my attention. We were having a conversation and he brought it to my attention. And as we were talking, he was like, oh, wow, mom, y'all should probably talk about this on the show. And I asked him for some more insight. And then I began to, you know, YouTube and watch some videos to kind of familiarize myself and um, everything I heard. Um is what you just explained to Lisa. Uh, but the one thing that stood, I was going to say this later, but I'll go ahead and say it now. The one thing that stood out to me was uh, you really don't need critical race theory if you teach the truth in the history books. And people are in search for the truth. And um, I feel like because they are not getting it, you know, you can continue to, you know, suppress something, put a Band-Aid on something until eventually everything comes out because eventually the, the truth will come forth. And so we've been taught what they want us to learn. And now someone is standing up and saying, no, this is not true. This is not true about race. No, we have not overcome. I uh, know this is how it started. Yes, this is real. And so uh, now that people are bringing attention to it this way, now it's a problem. Race, unfortunately, race is still a problem in the United States of America. And it's still a problem um, in the school system, in the workforce, in the government. And it, it, it's just a problem. I, I just feel like a, a one thing, if you don't want something like this being taught, or you feel like it's a problem because your kids are gonna be told the truth about their forefathers, their grandparents and great grandparents or how they used to treat people. Uh, that's a concern of yours. Just put the truth in the, in the history books and stop covering it up. Stop only telling your side of the story, tell the story. Very good point, very good point. Well, to that point, again, we're all in the same age bracket. In school, we find out that there were a lot of things missing 
-hmm. throughout history books. Okay. Um, particularly after um, the Civil War um, and books being put together, um, the Daughters of the Confederacy decided that they wanted to come in and edit, that's the best word I want to use, edit what was being taught. Okay. So that brings up other issues have happened throughout the world where stuff is taught. One area is Germany teaching about World War II. They have been excellent about teaching what actually happened and they teach it from the perspective of how not to repeat this again. So why in the United States do we struggle with, as you said, Sonia, dealing with the truth? So one of the things that, you know, I find and even in my conversations with um, people of all different races, one of the things that I, I find is the embarrassment of it, mm -hmm. right? It's the, the embarrassment, the shame of the ancestors and what was done. And so when people start, when, when people are ashamed of it, instead of coming from a framework of shame and coming from a framework of, I want to understand this better. I, I want to make sure this doesn't happen again. Instead of coming from that, People are coming from a position of shame. Now, on the flip side of it is, uh, as my my son comes from a perspective of, well, you know, you don't want to teach that because you don't want people to feel like this is, and this is from a young person. This could very well, you don't want to be teaching that this is what happened to you so you don't have the right to succeed or you don't have, an, you know, your chances of succeeding are slim to none because of all of this stuff happening. I don't, I don't think it's coming from that perspective. However, that's a different perspective to look at it, you know, from like, oh, we've been kicked down for so long. We've been, you know, are we, if since it's woven into every bit of fabric of life, you know, um, of society, the, the, the employment, uh, um, you know, the industry, the workforce, um, education, all of these different things is woven, woven into that politics, is woven into that fabric. So do we have an opportunity to succeed? And the answer to that question is, is of course, it's woven into every ounce of that. And some people say, oh, well, I'm just one person. Martin Luther King was one person, mm -hmm. right? And I know we always go back to Dr. King. Dr. King was one person, but he mobilized a lot of people mm -hmm. because of what he was doing. And he was coming from a place of truth, mm -hmm. a place of honesty, um, a place of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to, to, to fight with bricks and sticks and guns because we already know we're right. So it's almost like I'm not going to argue with you if I know I didn't take your piece of candy. Did you take? I didn't take it. And I'm not going to keep this debate up. I'm not going to keep going back and forth about it. So, you know, trying to take certain books out of the school system because certain words were in there and it's embarrassing. Trying to take, uh, not allow children to learn about, listen, I'm so tired of the old standard black history people. I mean, I'm not tired of them. I'm tired of the teaching of just them. You know, you won't hear that. You'll hear Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, um, George Washington Carver. You're going to hear those. How often do you hear Marcus Garvey? How often do you get that? Unless you happen to be in a school district in an area that's on Martin Luther King Boulevard mm -hmm. and it's Martin Luther King Elementary School. Mm -hmm. right. You're not going to hear that. Right. You're not going to hear about, you're not going to hear about Paul Robeson. They're not going to tell you about that. They don't want to tell you about people that might have been. They don't even want to talk about Mark. They don't want to even talk about Malcolm mm -hmm. X. Mm -hmm. What? They are not doing that. Mm -hmm. So they've chosen a few acceptable Negroes, right. if you will. Right. Bring it. And that's what they're going to teach on. Mm -hmm. And when my son was in a brick and mortar Baptist conservative school, all the black history was at the back of the book. Right. And they right. were those standards that I told you about. Mm -hmm. And he's been learning about those standards since he was three. So he was tired of those standards. So he knew those standards. Like, mm -hmm. okay, right. I already know about them. 
Right. Well, what it does is it promotes a thing of fear. So Ms. Dixon had made a, a comment, which was very good. Um, critical race theory is a cross disciplinary intellectual and social movement of civil rights scholars and activists who seek to examine the intersection of race and law in the United States and to challenge mainstream American liberal approaches to racial justice. Very good explanation helps you to understand how it intersect. So the issue that seems to be promoted is fear. Do you guys see that when it comes to having this discussion? Absolutely. Okay. What do you think they're fearful of? The truth. Exactly. Absolutely. The truth. Period. People are fearful of the truth. And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why um, I believe in what I've learned, one of the reasons that you know, slaves were not allowed to learn is because if you learn, you're going to, if you can learn to read, you're going to learn the truth. The truth, exactly. Where are you preaching now, Bettina? Right, but then it just shows again that slavery was, if you think about it, it was more psychological than it was anything. If I can keep you not paying attention to, and honestly, if we tell the truth in our community, we are still dealing with that when it Absolutely. comes to money, when it comes to businesses, when Absolutely. it comes to yes, a number of things that we are starting to deal with. But when you think about the people who are trying to squash this, there's a fear there. So to your point, Bettina, a lot of times when it comes to, because I think someone brought up the idea of Nat Turner, Nat Turner was allowed to minister, but they had literally taken parts of the right. Bible out mm -hmm. so that it was not well-rounded. You know, the scripture Sonya read today, we don't want you to be strong about nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we want you to be subservient. We want you to, to, you, you, you know, we're going to go to the scripture that talks about, you know, slaves need to be respectful to their masters. That's what we're going to teach. We're only going to give you parts. So this, this practice of taking things out is as old as whatever. But so do you listen, think, go ahead, Bettina. One second. I just wanted to put this on here. They don't want their children. This is Audrey Perry Williams. That's my cousin. They don't want children. And she, let me just tell you, she teaches black history. When I tell you is deep down into it, um, is, is an exceptional educator when it comes to these things. And so she said, don't, they don't want their children to learn something that will make them feel bad about themselves. And let me tell you what I say to that. How do they think we feel about ourselves when it comes to slavery? Girl. When it comes to the fact that we are not allowed in certain places, when it, how do they think we felt when you have a, a fountain over here that's nasty and dirty that says colored and one over here that says white? And okay? that's true. So, however, I must protect my children because I don't want you to feel bad, Susie, because I don't want you to be upset because we used to own slaves. Saying. It's yeah. okay for me to know that my ancestors were slaves. I don't want my children to be upset because their ancestors owned slaves. But think about and that. Think and about were oppressors. Point. Think about this point. How many times in history have we waited 50 years for the truth to come out about things that have happened? Mm -hmm. It happened today. We have to wait till that person is dead and gone. And then the truth, the Damn real it. CRT comes out 50 years later because now they're gone. A think lot about of Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A lot of that, I think a lot of the issues today is a lot of the people who were involved in the suppression and the oppression, they're still alive. A lot of people's grandparents, great, great grandparents or great grandparents are still alive and they don't want you to be able to sit across the table and ask them questions on why did you sit at the lunch counter and prevent them from being able to eat? you know, or drink from the same water fountain. They don't want to have to answer the questions now. You could tell it after I'm dead and gone, but don't don't put me on the spot right now. So I want to bring up 11 Alive did a, a, a um, not a serve, I guess it was a, a, a test <clears throat> to see what would happen. And they had two people, <clears throat> they were a couple, they were opposed to CRT, okay? And what they did was, they exposed them to four different places that gave them information or what I like to call education about what CRT was. One was at Emory University. Um, another one was at the um, African, the newest African American Museum here in Atlanta. Um, another was um, a principal who was let go 
and how he felt about, you know, what was going on and whatever. And it was basically like a test. You know, they give you a, a pretest, how you feel about things, and then they give you a post test after it's over. The number one answer that came from both of them, first of all, it changed their mind about CRT. It also revealed that they didn't read anything about it. It was all hearsay. Mm -hmm. OK, it was all hearsay. They didn't know. And that's usually what you have, you know, after the fact right. we didn't know. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's what I call planned ignorance. I didn't want to know. Mm -hmm. It's a difference between being ignorant and I didn't know. If mm -hmm. I didn't know how to add three plus five, I just didn't know. But when I don't want to know, this is about not wanting to know. And honestly, I hear teachers say about you know, they don't want them to feel bad, but I feel like that is very superficial. Underneath it altogether is if more information comes out, then we lose somewhat of control. That's it. Similar to what we are talking about today about Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That's the point altogether. I think the issue period is they are already losing control mm -hmm. and this would just that dive would take them even further to have the truth come out as to what actually occurred. What did our grandparents, the great great grandparents, do to have the truth actually expose them? It would take them even further um, because kids nowadays, if you notice, kids nowadays, they they're not all black and white. They're more open. They're more um, accepting to um, things that, you know, our parents or maybe us growing up were not um, that ac accepting of when we were younger. And I think for them to know the truth about what actually occurred, whether it's their ancestors or not, I think for them to know the truth would just send that control issue that the perpetrators already have that would just send that would just send them even further, even deeper into the hole that that's already been dug. If let that makes sense. You, let me tell you something. These these young people <clears throat> nowadays are already quite woke. Okay. Yes, they are. I mean, when yes, I tell ma you, if you yes, look at all of these movements and marches we had during uh Black Lives Matter and this and that and blah 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 and somebody got shot and this that and the other and I'm saying blah 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 not in a dismissive way right. I'm saying right. all of these different movements because I can't name them name them all because it was a lot okay right. listen you had people of all races creeds colors and the young people the 20 year olds the 19 year olds the 18 year olds who have these friends of all different races, creeds, and colors. Yes, My niece, Deborah J, when I tell you she got friends from every walk of yep. life, I mean, she has friends that are Asian, Hispanic, who are white, who are black, who are biracial, right. who are mixed, who are quadracial, got a whole bunch of other stuff in them. They don't care. They're they don't. not moved by that stuff. They're and, and they're agitated and aggravated by the fact that why are you trying to keep it a secret it happened we don't want it to happen again we're right. watching out for the future and by us being blended the way we are we're trying yes. to ensure that yes. it doesn't happen that there's not this separation and this is a young lady who speaks chinese you mm -hmm. look at her you listen to her speak chinese mandarin and you with your eyes closed and this young lady you open your eyes and you don't know that that's a young black girl mm -hmm. So, so, she, so I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so what I'm saying is, is the younger people, they're not trying to get woke. They're already woke. woke. That's true. That's it's true. a matter of not the, the older people, like you said, Vanessa or Sonia, whoever said it, I don't want grandma who is 102, who knows that she spit in some slaves water right. before yep. that yep. Who, who knows that her father fathered some children by right. one of the slaves and yep. she's got sisters okay mm -hmm. and it, you she doesn't want that to come out and exactly. the one of the one of the statements that they make if you listen to to a lot of them that are oh well times were different then mm -hmm. and just things right. were just different they weren't the same like they are now you don't understand well, let me ask so, a quick question. Let me just, I'm uh -huh. sorry, let me just ask a quick question. Why do you think Germany was so successful in 
exposing it, putting it out there, um, making it, making known what occurred and being able to move forward because in addition to having reparations, they, they have reparations behind what occurred. Um, why do you think they they were so successful, more successful than we are? What's, what's so one, one, I want to at least add to that conversation because not only do they, they made a complete change, as the Bible said, repent. They literally changed and went the other direction. One, it it represented the fact that the people that were during Hitler's time or whatever were not the majority. And you had this small minority that was running things, which is very typical even here in the U.S., okay? But they decided they didn't want to be that anymore. They also had to deal with um, the sanctions and all sorts of things because they were losing money all over the place. OK, so they had to make a change in order to be part of the world order. You know what was going on, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they take it as far as going to concentration camps, I need you to understand where this goes. OK, so that people understand that we're not like that. So what was really, really interesting in a poll that they took out of the countries that were more democratic, Germany stood over the United States. Oh, because of the fact that the racism issue, because of the right. fact that they do not want to address it, they want to act like it's not there. They want to tell you, like Bettina said, you are making too much of this. Everything is always the race card, this, that, and the third. So to that point, what has not been addressed is the fact of how the people who have been oppressed have been feeling all this time. That's not a topic of conversation. The topic of conversation is, well, it should mean that it puts this other person down, you know, so that we can be, and the person that really drives me crazy is Ted Cruz, okay? okay. Ted Cruz and his foolishness, you know, well, we shouldn't have to, and this, that, and a third or whatever. But again, we're not saying that you have to. What we're asking you to address is, is that it exists. Mm -hmm. but, but why do you, I'm not even saying that they didn't. Where were the people in Germany saying, uh, you know, we don't want to feel bad about, we don't want to make the, the perpetrators feel bad about uh, imprisoning and or killing, uh, you know, the Jews. Where, where were the people, did people in Germany say that? And did anybody listen? You know, why is it, why are we um, held to a different standard? We're not. It's to a planned ignorance, which is what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. If it's, it's not ignorant, like I don't know, because ignorant means I'm just not aware. But when I decide I don't want to be, that's a whole nother kit and caboodle. If you don't, if you don't learn history, you are definitely bound to repeat it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Period. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so to that point, the question I'll ask before we, we, before we close is as a country during the George Floyd um, murder, cause that's just what that was a murder. Mm -hmm. Like Bettina said, every nationality was out marching. However, does it feel like, or do you feel like the tide is changing and going the other direction? Changing how? Changing away from that, because it seemed as if we were uniting to fight this atrocity that happened on national television. And now you see the parents who are in an uproar, um, everybody turning out at parent teachers meetings and school board meetings and all of that. Do you feel like the tide is changing back the other direction? I don't think the tide is changing back to the oh, other no. direction. I just think the squeakiest wheel is the loudest. And I think that I think that the people that are screaming against, oh no, don't teach critical race theory, don't do that. I just think they're louder. And I think there are a lot of people who are misinformed. And just like you were talking about, Talisa, the the survey or whatever it was that they did, you know, showed people saying, ooh, I didn't even know that. Like, I didn't even read that. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's what it is. I just think the squeakiest wheel is the loudest. And I think that we need to have conversations and not arguments. Mm -hmm. I think if one person will be quiet, like we teach our children when they're young, when I'm speaking, you're quiet. And then when it's your turn, because we can't hear each other if we're talking over each other. So right. if by chance, if we can't sit down and have a conversation and somebody else say, wow, hadn't thought about it that, that way, 
hadn't looked at it from that perspective. That's what the reality of it is. I don't think we're necessarily shifting. We, we've Ahmaud Arbery. Think about that. You know, think about the 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 verdict. Right. You know, because think ten years ago, maybe that might not have been the verdict. It think have. about it. Seriously. And, it and to think about the other mothers who who lost their children and did not get a positive verdict and did yep. not get that. In in that aspect, I think it's shifting. In that aspect, I mean, shifting for the better because they just recently also uh, were found guilty on the hate crime. Right. The uh, federal uh, charge. Ahmaud yep. Arbery, Ahmaud Arbery and uh, the George Floyd. Um, I got to say those three men were yes. found guilty of federal hate crimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I I'm sorry. Like what, no, the three men were charged were charged with um, um, abusing his uh, civil rights. Civil rights. Right. Civil rights. Um, I also like what D. Lynn Dixon um, had to say. Um, she said, if the conversation begins, then change would likely follow. Those that drive the narrative that the discussion isn't needed know that, which is true. Amen. They certainly do. Amen. That's Absolutely. why we're trying to suppress it. I just want to add that um, um, I'm going to piggyback on Bettina, and I agree with her comment. I want to add that if we want to see change, it has to start in our leadership. So those same people, when we come together um, multiculturally and racially like we do, we need to do that. The same. We need to do the same thing when it comes to voting, because it's not until we get some of these people out of leadership in our local state and federal government that some of these people that we want to see change then we become the change but it has to happen also in our leadership and that's part of the problem so we can only get so far but because of the people that you have leading you then it pushes you back and then guess what we start all over again and it's just we are constantly repeating the cycle and so some of those people and i'm gonna because a lot of them been up there for years some of them die out i mean 80 and 90 years old oh my goodness what are you doing right. and so when we go out to vote or raise up new leadership some of these young people who that who we want to see to get a better understanding of who do understand who are already woke decide to uh to start to run for office i mean we got to change the leadership in our government that will help and to me and that answers your question too vanessa when you talked about the difference in us in germany that's that's one that's the main problem to me is our government yeah and our leadership absolutely Agreed. and i think you know what was said you know staying part of the conversation don't be not in part of the conversation pay attention have a voice as as it was said we whoever controls the narrative okay so that means we have to be involved we have to be part of the conversation so ladies this has been a fabulous conversation of course y'all know we can't even finish this today no. um but again just touching on it sometimes it's just that reminder don't be ignorant don't have a planned ignorance where i don't want to be involved we need you and we need you part of the conversation Absolutely. ladies i loved having this conversation with yes. you so we will be back in two weeks having another conversation and you need to be plugged in to be part of it. So ladies, y'all want to say bye? Have a wonderful week. Have a blessed week. week. Yes. Have a wonderful we'll week, everyone. We'll see you in two weeks. Take care. Bye-bye. Get ready for Sonia, Teresa, <laughs> Vanessa, Bettina. Come on. Say what? Come on. Say what? We got bam, hot topics. We got what the fudge. So bring it home. Say You want to cheat, you want to chat, you want to talk about this and talk about that. You're in the right place to hear the facts. Bring it home. Say what? Bring it home. Say what? The ladies are bringing the conversation. So join us or say what across the nation. Bring it home, y'all. Say what?